Hi, I'm Mike Smith for Filmbook.com, and this is my audio podcast preview of Gotham, which airs Monday, September 22nd at 8 o'clock on Fox. Gotham, created by Bruno Heller, creator of Rome and The Mentalist, leads the pack for a bunch of new comic book-based shows premiering in the next couple of weeks, including Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., The Flash, Arrow, and Constantine, among others. Will the show have what it takes to stand out in the newly crowded realm of comic book TV shows? The show follows Jim Gordon during his early days working for the Gotham City Police Department. This is before he's the commissioner, before he even grows a mustache, everything. He's paired with Harvey Bullock to solve the murder of Thomas Martha Wayne, whose son, as we all know, will eventually grow up to become Batman. Now, I love Batman. I have since I was a kid. I think Christopher Nolan's trilogy are the best superhero films out there, providing a definitive look at the character and acting as game changers for blockbuster films in general. I've read a lot of the older Batman comics, though I've been mostly enamored with Frank Miller's work on stuff like The Dark Knight Returns in year one. I'm a big fan of Adam West's old 60s TV show, and Batman the Animated Series and Batman Beyond were pretty much required viewing when I was growing up. The point is, Batman is awesome, a character in a universe that had the ability to strike a lot of different tones depending on who is telling the story and what they intend to do with it. That said, I have a lot of mixed feelings towards this show going into it. While I like the idea of following the early days of Gordon's career, similar to year one, the fact of the matter is, this is a Batman show that is not going to have Batman in it. That's not necessarily bad, but it may make it difficult for the show to come into an identity of its own. My biggest fear is that every episode will be setting up the appearance of Batman without ever actually getting there. I'm also not terribly thrilled by the idea of all the Batman villains the show seems to be trying really hard to work in. The ones we've seen the most in the marketing are the Riddler and the Penguin, as well as a teenage Selina Kyle. We're also going to see people like Harvey Dent, Poison Ivy, the Scarecrow, and Mr. Freeze, to name a few. While I'm sure they could be portrayed well and I'd love to be proven wrong, it seems like the show is throwing everything they've got at the wall and seeing what sticks, instead of taking its time to find one or two characters who really work in the universe they're developing. That's a trouble a lot of prequels have, and it gives the show a lot to prove. Can a Batman show without Batman work? It's an uphill battle. What I'm hoping for is for the show to really give off a vibe of desperation. We need to see how hopeless and how corrupt the city of Gotham has become or will become. Gordon can't necessarily win at the end of every episode, Otherwise, what do we need Batman for? What this series does have going for it are its two leads. Ben McKenzie and Donald Logue have been cast as Gordon and Bullock, actors who are well-versed in playing cops and thus look to at least be comfortable in their roles. There's also some good names that will be making guest appearances, like Carol Kane, Richard Kind, and Sarah Paxton, and from what I've heard, Jada Pinkett Smith is doing some of the best work of her career on this show. The look of the show feels good. Trailers have indicated this will be a moody, dark show in line with the Nolan films, And while I think the final product will be more like Nolan Light, that could actually work. The limitations of those films were that some of the crazier, more out-there villains couldn't be done, because they didn't fit into that hyper-real universe. If this show can somehow manage that Nolan-like intensity with a little bit of comic book goofiness, Gotham could end up being something pretty special. Thank you for listening to Gotham City's podcast. I'm Mike Smith. If you're listening to this review on YouTube or Daily Motion, please subscribe to our channel, like, and comment on the video below. If you're listening to this review via our podcast on iTunes, please subscribe to our podcast, rate it, and take a moment to give us a review. For more of my thoughts on Gotham and other films and TV shows, check out my work at filmbook.com or follow me on Twitter at msmithfilmblog.